Yeah, good day again. Well, uh, just learned something here. I've been doing a video actually before and I've done this twice and haven't got it right. I was using a, um, a spirit level to check the camber and I turned it sort of. They always seem to be like one wheel going one way and the other wheel going. Not leaning the same way, which meaning, you know, one had a, like an in camber. I think that's a negative actually, is inside at the top. And, yeah, and the other side positive. And anyway, like the first time I'd done it, I had it nosed into the garage here and had it right up here. Here I am. And the second time I had it backed in to where it is now. And it seemed to be the opposite to where I'd set it, so I reset it. And I get the same response. It did, did a corner well in, you know, one way and not so well the other way. And uh, also wasn't tracking that well in a straight line. I wanted to wander a little bit. And, uh, yeah, after I did it the second time... And, Sort of still, I was sort of looking at it actually, and I noticed, you know, that like the clearance on the garb was different. One man he had, like when you, you know, looked down the side and you lined the tire up with the guard, you know, and it was different one side, the other one side was hanging out more. And uh, anyway, I was looking at the floor, and I, I know this floor is not level, and that's sort of. Um, I'm not really f forgotten about it, but I just sort of didn't think that of how it might affect setting the camber with a you know, with a spirit level. Like you can see on the floor here. So this is where I've been, you know, wet and rubbing the primer on those fairings. You can see where the water is running, yeah? It always runs off the left, same at the front. And yeah. I don't know how dramatic it'll be. I don't think it's much, you know, the, the unlevelness of the floor. Like. But uh, anyway, I started wondering how that would affect it, and it affects it a lot. I was sort of amazed. Uh, what I ended up doing, uh, I did this earlier today, and I actually. I well, took it out over in front of the garage to a new bit of concrete and, and I hope that it might be a bit more level. And uh, yeah, first I checked it again with the, with the spirit level and yeah, showed that it was very different to what I'd said of that. And then I uh, probably, yeah, it's probably not enough light to actually see this. And I've got my carpenter square out. I get it, yeah. Get it sort of square with the wheel, you know, not at any sort of an angle. And, uh, see, that seems a lot. You can really sort of see it. There's actually quite a bit there now. I got about, there'll be 10 mil. Yeah. Anyway, I've readjusted that one side because that one side was actually, yeah, you know, it was leaning out. It was, you know, I think, positive camber. I know I could be wrong on that, which is positive, which is negative. Anyway, but that wheel was actually leaning out. And that's the wheel, that's how it was to start with before I even started fiddling with any of the cambers. And that wheel used to scrub on the mudguard, that left hand wheel. And uh, let's see, we haven't got yeah, we haven't got quite as much. We've got about mm -hmm. let's check that again. So I just set that. What was it? Well, this side's about, 
um, three to five mil. Well, that's touching the tire at the bottom. Yeah. Only two of those suspensions. I'll jump up and down and even push it back a bit because you. I noticed this first with the back when you jack it up, it's noticed it when I had the swing arm um, axles in it. You jack it up, the wheels will be in at the top, and you put it back down the ground and they stay that way. You had to roll it, bounce it a few times to get the wheels camber back to where it should be. And it seems to be sort of the same with the front. You got to roll it around, bounce it a little bit. Oh, yeah. That's better. I'm just bouncing a bit. It's changed. Still a little more than the other side. We've probably got... Yeah. Three to four. So it's probably a mil or two. More. More cameras than the other side. But anyway, I'm going to see how that goes. I said it's only about a mil difference now. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's the thing with doing this stuff without equipment, you know, you, you don't really know whether you got it right until you take it a drive and see how it drives. So, yeah, it's a lot of fiddle farting around, test driving, bringing it back, trying again, you know, doing different things until you, you work out how it drives best. And uh, yeah, to make make that more uh, more difficult and frustrating is that every time you change a camber, you got to redo the towing because it you know you you bring it out a few mil on the camber and it changes the the towing by half an inch. You know, it's, it's twelve thirteen mil. It it dramatically changes the towing. So yeah. Yeah. If you're doing a wheel alignment, yeah, check your camber first and get that right um, before you're doing your towing, your towing because of the law to it. Anyway, um, so I suppose that'll do for this ramble. And uh, I said, I think I'm getting more ac a bit more an accurate reading now using, yeah. Carpenter square, little square. So, yeah, so I won't know now till I take it for a test drive. Let's see how it goes. It'll probably, um, yeah, given that you know, negative camber, it'll probably corner quite well. But whether it, how well it goes in a straight line. Could be the issue, you know. I might have to bring that camber back a bit to get it to drive straight and not wander around. But uh, as I said again, I'm only guessing. As with you know, all videos that I make on this, I'm only sort of learning as I go. I'm not, you know, I mean, I've done some workshop training and various things, and I've learned quite a bit from mechanics on YouTube and other things over the years and from other people, you know, mechanics, but I'm not a qualified mechanic and uh, I'm basically trying to get around having to pay qualified mechanics, you know, because I can't afford it. So. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, a lot of this is sort of trial and error thing and it's basically just to give a bit of an idea or some sort of helpful hints to other people who are doing trial and error and trying to also save themselves money, but yeah, there is always professional advice that you can get if you go searching for it, but it doesn't seem to be yeah, too much on, on wheel alignments on these things that I found on YouTube, so yeah, that's been so. As I said, I'm just trying things out to see what works. Eventually, I'll come up with with something that works properly. Yeah. I did actually take this in. This is before it 
did the last trip in New South Wales and uh, took it in for a wheel alignment and it was shit. It, I mean, it was so bad I was doing toe-in alignments on the way up, you know, just to get it to where it would drive reasonable, you know, and, yeah, it's sort of, I got this done the day before I went on the boat and it didn't seem that bad driving home, but, you know, that's not on a freeway, that was on twisty, windy roads coming out here, so, you know, I mean, it didn't feel that crash hot, but, yeah, it didn't. I didn't think it was as bad as what it actually turned out to be. And, uh, and given it was only the day before I left, I wasn't able to take it back and say, oh, you did a shit job, fix it up, you know. So just had to drive up there and correct it myself. So, yeah, anyway, that's enough for ramble. And uh, I'm actually going to delete the video now where I, used a um a spirit level to do the cam because you know unless you unless you got a perfectly level floor it's not gonna work well, from my observation anyway so all right well, thanks for listening to my ramble and uh, we'll catch you later bye